Yo, what is up guys and welcome to this video. Now, a quick intro. Last week we did a full ranking guide. If you haven't checked it out, make sure to watch it. But it was received really well and you guys said that you want to see more of these guides, more champion directed guides. So here we are and this week we have Camille. We did a voting poll between Gare and Jax and Camille. Camille ended up getting on top, so this week we're doing Camille. And as you guys can see, she's an S tier champion as well. She's S tier in Emerald Plus, S tier in Diamond, S plus tier in Diamond Plus. S plus tier in Diamond 2 plus, S tier in Master plus, and S tier in Grandmaster plus. So, the layout for this video will be very similar to last week, where I'm first going to be talking about rune setups, some item builds, and then talk about the tips and tricks that you can do with your kit. And then we're going to have four games. Two games are going to be against really good matchups for us, so we're going to have a game against the Garen and a game against the Kel, and then we're going to have two games against the harder matchups, such as more the Kaiser and Alawi. So, stay tuned for that and get into the video. If you are serious about improving and climbing to your design, league rank you're in the right place this year i've worked on laying out two courses that will help you in all aspects to improve one is about all the fundamentals for the landing phase and the other one goes in depth on tempo and the mid to late i've been challenger for seven years and i can guarantee you that this will massively speed up your process and reaching any goal that you have set in mind both courses have a preview video where you can see the style of the videos so check those out before anything you can also always join my discord to check out some reviews all right let's get into the video all right guys let's start talking about camille's kit now in my opinion camille has a relatively simple kit right there's nothing really too intricate about their kit but there's still some interesting things that you need to know in order to start playing this champion efficiently so let's actually sell all the items that i have and i just want to showcase you guys some field tricks that you can do with her abilities first of all and this is probably one of the most important things to know is every time you land your q you gain movement speed so for example if i alter q look at my movement speed right here i'll be getting movement speed right so that is a very important thing to know and this also happens after your q too, right so every time you let your q on an opponent it gives you movement speed so very often what you want to do for example is you alt q and then you want to w afterwards because that's when you get the movement speed it's the easiest way to secure your w as well so again you do alt q and a good w and as you guys can see right here is your q functions as an auto attack cancel i'm going to stop refreshing my cooldowns but what you can notice as well is that you can actually animation cancel your q ability with a w as well so you can do alt q right to cancel your alt attack refresh timer so you get a alt attack reset like that but you can also use that with your w so you do alt q and then w instantly right and then your q still refreshes and you can hit it off so a full combo with camille would look something like for example, Alto Q, W, and then you E, Alto Q again, right? That is a very simple combo how you can do it. Basically, every time you want to Alto Tech Q, right, then W, E, let the W and auto Q again. That's pretty much the basic combo that you can do on Camille. Some things that are important to note as well, uh, for example, is if I E towards an enemy, you see how long the range is. Whereas if I were to E towards no enemies, look how short the range is, right? The, way, the range is way shorter. So always keep that in mind, your E range is much, much larger when you actually go towards enemies. That's the thing to notice. And you can also use your flash whilst you're flying to redirect your opponent and redirect your flash right then you can still have your stuff stunned with that as well if you do it properly right so you see the target is still stunned and it's like one of the best ways to initiate on somebody one thing that's also interesting to see is you can so you can use your w in the air and still make it so that after your e your w will enter your opponent now this is a little bit more of an intricate timing you can get used to it i think it's one of the beauties of camille when i see like full one tricks doing combos like that right with their w when it's like perfectly timed like that i'm not good at the time myself i'm not the best camille player but you see i did the timing a little bit earlier right where you can actually i think you have to like w uh, yeah even there my timing is off i don't get the full damage okay another thing to note about the w you see it has two different lines the furthest line is kind of where you want it to hit because as you see let's just show the difference as well if i clear them and spawn a new one you see if the w goes in the short range it actually doesn't slow him and doesn't deal that much damage whereas if i do it here it will slow him plus it will deal extra damage plus sustain me right so you always want to try and make sure it's in their out range not in a close range very similar to a darius q for example other than that uh, you can use your ultimate as well to kind of hide the animation so you can do alt q right reset that and then get your Q off again. Uh, I feel like her kit is very simple to utilize. Uh, and you just really want to learn how to play around appropriate Sheen cooldowns. Because the true damage that you get from Sheen converts it into true damage as well. For example, here you see Trinity Force also has an intricate cooldown timer. So you always want to try and make it. So for example, when I auto E and my Sheen is on cooldown, right? My Q would do a lot less damage to it. So you want to always try and get your Sheen on the Q2 so that it just deals that extra damage. Right now that does a lot more damage. And if I were to, for example, do this, right? And then I use 
E and then use my auto attack and then Q2 it deals a lot less damage because I don't have the Sheen. So what you want to do in your combos with Camille is always try and have it so your Sheen hits on the Q2 because this is the most DPS you will get. You see that it's 255, 170 whereas if I do this right and I'll be using my E and now Q it's only 137 and 91. So keep in mind you always want to try and have your Sheen on the Q2 as well that basically deals the most damage. Anything other than that, it's mostly just using your W in lane for sustain, using your auto Q. Uh, maybe one more thing we need to talk about, of course, is their passive. That's the only thing that I forgot to mention. Basically, as an entry cooldown, it can give you either a physical shoot or a magic shoot. And if you're wondering when am I gonna get a magic shoot or when am I gonna get a physical shoot, it depends on the damage you've been dealt with late by your opponent. And you see right here how it's orange. That means I'm gonna get an orange shoot as well. If it's blue, you need a magic shoot. So you will block magic incoming magic damage or your block incoming physical damage that is pretty much all there is to our abilities let's get into the video well we get one of our best matchups camille is very good against garen now garen is the only matchup and i saw another camille player do this against me when i was garen where you actually go first strike and it's kind of disgusting i can go approach velocity too maybe doing bone planting shield bash or demolish shield bash works too we should take attack speed and the nice thing about this is i will always proc the first strike first so this is the only matchup where i would run first strike as camille against most range champions and some melee champions like Gwen, for example that are bad for me and like Jax, i go grab and against good matchups or matchups that I can contest in the early game, I would conquer. So if I wouldn't go first strike here, I would go conquer into Garen because it's a good matchup. But against Jax, against Gwen, since they're bad matchups, I go a grasp. The reason why you go grasp into those range champions is so that you can have second wind, D shield, and cookies. So it gives you the easiest time in laning. I'm gonna go deep late as I'm gonna go for an aggressive setup here. You can also run PTA against those matchups, but I still think that Resolve's inspiration allows you to play the best into range champions. If I ult Echo, you can never ult back. Syndra has a really hard time avoiding me because i can always ult over he e i have a good matchup uh i mean yeah it's just a little that's annoying boom we're rich baby i don't have flash so i can play really slow here Garen flash, plus he has to recall right now, so this is extremely good for my matchup. If somebody can cancel him, it's even better. Garen is completely screwed. Okay, so chat, what you do in these scenarios when Garen is screwed like this at level 1? Did I XP? I did. Okay, what I wanted to try and do is actually pull this wave to aggro it onto me to make a push towards me, but to be fair, what I'm gonna do now is not hit the minions at all. In these scenarios, you never hit minions, okay? Because Garen is going to lose the first three minions worth of XP here, and that snowballs 10 times harder than anything else. So I always want to ensure that he lose these three minions. I don't hit. Now I'll just use my W at the latest frame. Boom, he loses all three. My main step a little bit forward, so this wave might even bounce back a little bit to me because his wave arrives a little bit slower. Alright, he lost four means worth of XP. I'm gonna get level two from this mean as well. Boom, level up timers two. That's because I've got the XP, and this wave is actually pushing towards me, I believe, chat. Yeah, this wave is actually pushing towards me. How disgusting is that? He has no flash, he's down in XP, and the wave is pushing towards me. Yeah, how does Garen play the game chat? Who has the answer? How can I play for Garen? Okay. Boom, first strike proct. Plus 29 gold right there. Pretty good value already. I get passive, so I don't get that much. Boom, plus 11 again. Alright, he has no flash. Half HP. Painful bounce. Because these guys will still make it bounce. Echo could be top side. I'm gonna recall, get my Sheen, and then Garen pretty much cannot play out this bounce and he's completely screwed. I'll buy a pink so I can play super aggressive on this bounce because I can get two wards. No shit is here. I'm gonna put my ward down. This guy has no flash. I'm gonna ping that he has no flash. And now I can test the bounce. He's forced to lock up for last hits. So I'm only gonna last hit, making sure that this wave still pushes forward to re. And now he pretty much can play the game. Boom. Nope. Wave's still pushing towards me. To be fair, I was, thought it was pushing faster towards me, but it's still pushing towards me. Actually, no, it's not. Oh, Echo. Nah, no, it's okay. No, that's okay. I mean, I, we can dive, I guess. If he wants to dive, I'm down for that. I'm gonna try and use all my abilities right now, so I have them on cooldown when we dive. No, Nocturne. 
Let's do my kill as well. Oh, I misplayed that so hard. You know, by him eating away, my E range got longer, and that's why I actually lived. Pogers! Thank you, Echo. Uh, okay, this is definitely Trinity Force game. Now against Garen, with Ult Ignite, it's very important to actually build HP. So I'm gonna be building HP double longsword. It's much better to, like, build HP here, double longsword, instead of just building the full hard pound X. It might be worth actually running Futures Market in the setup, because the faster you get your item, and you kind of, I also can kind of cheat you some of your recalls like that. All right, we start the slow push again. Echo died with 31 CS in bot lane. Echo can go to both sides now. He could recon go to top side or he can go back to his bot side. It's a bit vague here. He kind of has a lot of options. His camps are really mismatched. I think he only did one camp and then already ganked again. So I think what I could do here, for example, to help also the rest of my teammates is to just hard push this wave and then put a deep ward in here with my pink ward. In theory here, the Garen can never get back in the game unless I die. So if I farm even here till Trinity Force, like this Garen's game is pretty much still over, right? So all I realistically want to do is just farm even till Trinity Force, and, and, and then it's like GG. There's a plate right here as well that I can play for, that's why I'm on Hypers as well. And then my proxy next wave, even though my champion can't inherently proxy, I still get tempo here. So I can still proxy here to get some extra tempo for myself. And now Garen does not have enough time to push in this wave before I'm back. So Garen is forced to collect this, right? Whilst he's collecting, I'm going to be recalling. But because I recall, with the extra tempo I gain from proxying, now Garen... Okay, Garen does not have enough time to push in this next wave because I proxy. So even though my champion is kind of better proxying because I'm tracking the jungle and understanding how tempo works, I'm still back in time. So even if the Garen tries to hard push it right now, I'll just get a freeze. Prime example of how to still proxy even though I'm playing a champion without wave clear. Holy shit. Holy shit, that Garen is angry. <laughs> okay, poor fellow. Uh, old, so you can't old anywhere. Get him, fish. Okay, all good. We have Trinity Force in base, but I'm just gonna slow push it to hard push. No, I don't have FPS issue anymore, but thank you, bro. I mean, game is over. Slow push this wave, hard push this wave, get Trinity Force, and uh, call it the GG. Plus 38, pretty solid. I have TP coming up, so I can kind of overstay my tempo here to look for the plate. I get level 9, I'm not necessarily scared of him. Plus 37, we'll take those. Now recall, 10 minutes, so I can TP on the wave actually. Hmm, I'm actually gonna look, I don't have mana for E. Yeah, I didn't have mana for E. That's kind of awkward. Alright, it's okay though. It's still bad death, but it doesn't matter that much. I am ultra fed now. Slow push this wave to allow this wave to walk through. Now I can push this wave comfortably too. Garen's gonna come back. Now keep in mind, right? I always want to just E, even if he W's. It's true damage, so you see his W blocks nothing because it's dealing true damage. That's 63 gold right there. Now it's stacking up. So what you can do in these scenarios is we just hit the turret. Alright, he's using all his abilities. And then we E, Q, and then E away like that. Do the same thing. Pro Q1. Oh, no card to play. So you just always proc the Q1 on the turret, and then you Q, but look, whilst I'm Qing, you can actually E away too, right? So I do the Q1, it still goes through, but your E goes through as well. You need to get used to the timing, but if you do that, you can get the Q1 in and still block the turret auto attack as well. And then you just Q1 again on the turret, and then you just Q2 him with the ult. Alright, wait, I have two items Camille at minute 12. That's kinda nasty. This feels like Klepto Camille. Type 1 in chat if you've played Klepto Camille. If you have never played Klepto Camille, you don't know what you're missing out on. This would be a normal situation. Chat, it's illegal to have these two items on Camille at minute 12. Okay, let's, let's just put it that way. Let's just put it blunt. Watch this. That's true damage. AKA, they can't do anything against it. So yeah, this is what happens when I play Camille, a really good matchup, right? Most of the matchup in this guide are going to be in the harder matchups. But yeah, this game, like I told you, Garen's game was absolutely over level 1. Because he lost the EXP, and if you then play well, like I did, right? Garen can never play the game again. 
he will basically never get in a good position again because I'm always gonna have the, the mismatch of level up timers. I dodged his ult as well. He still has it though. Now here, when you're so far ahead chat, biggest tip I can give you, build defensive. Building defenses right now is offensive. As you guys clearly saw, I one-shot anybody in my vicinity. Actually, I should have went Mercs. I one-shot anybody that comes close to me, right? But if I build defensive right now, I will still one-shot them, but they cannot one-shot me anymore. So what can I do? Well, Elo this is this. It's like Diamond 1 Master anymore. Fish. I'm not going Sojin. I'm going Sterox. But uh, Sojin was the first item I saw. I'm going Sterox. Not FF'd, as they should. Alright. Right now, I'm absolutely enjoying being a content creator. Uh, I started doing this in December 2022, right? I transitioned from being a professional player to this. So honestly, I'm extremely happy with where I'm currently at and uh, yeah. Against Kill, I think it's a matchup where you can actually run PTA. This is a PTA game, chat. Because I'm playing against a ranged top lane champion. Yeah, I think this is a PTA type of game. And I think I even take this. And Approach Velocity, what this does, chat, is if I land my W onto him, I get movement speed towards him. So I'm gonna go for a super aggressive rune setup here. Where I get, where I land my W, I get movement speed towards my opponent for my early laning phase and try to snowball with this setup here. So I go PTA, yeah, and I go Flush Ignite. Alright, we get an AP jungler, which is very good. We're playing against, I have armor against Kale Karthus. What an noise. I was unfocused in that regard. But it's okay, armor is still okay because Kale usually will go D Blade or Coal first item. So it will still give me a better stats in the early laning phase to block me in damage and to block Kale's damage. So it's okay here. Oh, eat your prod, send me it after the game, brother. I'm sorry. Oh, I have to focus. All right. Let's go Easter then. They might cancel me. Let's recall safely. He actually is D-Ring Star. That's crazy. So my armor definitely loses value here. It's okay. What item is PTA? No, it's this. Oh my. Really? They're gonna die if they cancel me again, by the way. I, yeah. She just might lose the first three minutes worth of XP here, so it's still very good. I mean, they get a solo kill, right? So I have a bit more XP. I'll get level 2 from the first five minutes, I believe. Wait, right, kill walked around, so she lost one XP for sure. Oh, she boots. Oh, she TP'd. She base TP'd with boots. One minute for level 2. Let's see if I can abuse my level 2. How is she level 2? It's a glitch in the simulation. I guess she didn't lose any XP then. She got solo kill. Oh, she got kill XP as well, I guess. Because cards was nearby. It's okay, she has 0 CS. Weird level 1 start, but... What the hell is bro doing? Is that somehow gonna follow me? Is it gonna pick me? Guys, your lanes. Okay. No, oh, it, it, it is somehow our fault. <laughs> the least delusional jungle man. In the chat. The least delusional jungler. Right there. I think I proxy this wave. So I can get Sheen. Or I could have gotten Longsword. Dagger, maybe lo looks of dagger was just to play. I don't really gain that much tempo from this. I gotta make sure I recall here so Kel doesn't cancel me. She's still forced to play this bounce here. I get Sheen. Do I want Sheen? Or do I want the movement speed item? What's better stats for me here? So now my W gives me movement speed. This will give me movement speed so I can get close much easier towards her. Ooh, she's making a bounce back into her. She got the fun man's chat. Hey, she outplayed me. Well played to Kale. Well played. My my proxy was completely useless. I actually don't have the wave bouncing now. Kale has outplayed me. Proxy was terrible. Proxy was absolutely horrific. I should have just went dagger, longsword, and played the bounce. Kale gonna gets a skill to level 6 for this now. Good. That was the first setup. I will hit 6 faster than her, even though she has the prior on the way right now. Oh, I missed that mic passive shoot there. I'm trying to get her into execution range. Alright, 
I even saved my ignite. She saved her ult, I saved my ult. So we did end up getting a kill from making the bounce, right? But like I said, she did skill to level 6 or 5 from free, kinda. Right, she doesn't have TP yet, so my goal here is to try and push this wave as fast as I can. And that's also going to be by hitting the castles first. All right, now the wave will crash before this wave arrives. I will lose the play, but it's okay, I get tempo recall. So I get my item anyways. This, this, this thing wouldn't really change my recall. I mean, I guess I get the refillable, right? But I don't necessarily need it. And now I want to try and get to my Trinity Force as fast as I can, and then I can really start expanding my lead. So she's trying to hard persist as well, right? To make it bounce back into her again. So this scale definitely has fundamental understanding of how to play the lane. Because by her hard pushing the wave, it's go- I would get a freeze if I land that E! No, I don't get a freeze! If I miss one more E, I s Let's get the Trinity Force chat. I'm gonna slow push and try to get the Trinity Force, that's it. I guess we get a budget freeze, but it's not really a freeze, because as you guys can see, it means still walking to the turret range, so that's why it's not really a freeze here. This means I gotta try and grab their aggro, so they don't walk into the turret. I wanted to aggro onto me. Hit me. Very nice. I go that way. Okay, we have a command for missing E. No, but I can perma ban you. Alright, slow push this, hard push next. We get Trinity Force. Am I dead? Yes, I am. Lack of discipline. Lack of discipline by your boy. My Maokai hasn't recalled yet! 10 minutes into the game! That will teach me. My ult should come back faster than hers. I should have ult, but she should not have it yet. We can still carry this game. I'm actually very good against enemy team Kung, but I just gotta play much more disciplined. I should just push in the wave and recall, like I said I would. I mean, this card has been here a lot though. Like, this card has been a disgusting gremlin, making my game hard to play, but it's no excuse. Okay, Zed died. That's a fat shot off of my team. Can I not just dive this? I forgot about her flesh. I had to ult earlier. I forgot that she had flesh. Mama? Goodbye. We're chilling? Are we being chilling? Get. <laughs> How do we put ourselves back in the game? My Mauka has 50 CS. We definitely don't want to play with that guy, but my mid lane is actually pretty strong. They're, they're running away from Kel, so I can actually get a lot of kills. Okay, chat, we are back. We are back. That's one of the biggest benefits from Camille, you know? You are one of the best roaming champions in the game. So this wave runs back into me. A happy smile on my face. Said like I can't do anything to this guy, but... I okay, we got some Rufus do so. Banger. If Sivir does a little bit more damage, I can one-shot this out. He's gonna W for the wave. That's what I meant. Was that a kill? I think it was. I mean, I was dead anyways, right? Now what do I purchase to keep winning my movement? This guy's full AP, this guy's full AP, right? So I think some magic resist will help me. The best magic resist item is obviously this one. Or I go for whole breaker stats, but I don't think it's enough, maybe. Let's figure it out. I'm gonna collect top and play for this tier 1 turret. Herald is up there too, we're playing for dragon. Enemy team is probably gonna do that too, so I wanna play away from that and play for this top tier 1 turret, which will give me guaranteed income. They wanna play away from this, so we should go here. And go here. Let's just give the dragon. This dragon doesn't matter. I mean, I don't expect my Maokai to understand macro when he has no recall till minute 10. He literally didn't recall in jungle till minute 10, so... I don't think we should expect the best macro gameplay from that in individual. And now we lose the dragon and the herald. Who would have thought? This guy has no Zor, yes? Or no exhaust? Don't think they're allowed to do that with Ezreal farming bot and Kale farming top, but hey, here we are. I am still pretty far ahead in gold because I got the five turret plates in top, right? And um, I do have six kills, so I'm still pretty far ahead, but I have six death too. 
and this is kind of the gameplay that I really dislike. Uh, I really dislike my game for this game. I will never use this game for a guide because the thing is, I mean, unless it is to teach what not to do, right? Because even though I was, I'm ahead, right? I don't actually control this game. And why don't I control this game? Because I died six times. So even though I'm strong, enemy teammates are enemy team is strong as well. Simply because I died too much. This guy is so stupid, actually. I killed him old. I think I go bot lane now to push somebody to, to go into bot lane as well. I can get two waves here. My team can do Nash. If Kel goes bot, enemy team has to choose now. Do they stop me or do they stop Nash? I, I can maybe get a kill here. Kel is moving too though. I won't have I don't know how I can miss an E there, and I, I I don't know. No, it's just bad. How many subs to spam ping the Maokai in my name? And Maokai is spam ping himself like he's the GOAT, you know? Oh, no, never mind. Just save us. Alright, we did something good mechanically. That was better. Find it something good. Nice! Let's go here. This is why I said why I'm still very good against enemy comp, because I countered the kill and the Karthus and the Zed late game. The Zed cannot play against Camille. If we have seven deaths, like right now, this game I'm playing, very undisciplined. Like, I had a lead, and then I lost my lead. And I had a lead again, and I lost my lead again. And now I have a lead again, but the sad thing is, is like, it's kind of flipped, because one game, it will go well for me like this, but the, the, most games it will go wrong for me, right? And this is an ever consistent way to climb, so that's why I'm very unhappy with my gameplay this game. That ult actually lasts so long. I saw you though. Alright, now we've finally done two fights well mechanically, I guess. So now we're somewhat in the game, but... <laughs> Uzi Ruler Pace! Yeah! He had flash. No way. I don't think Death Sense is really required here. I like Soldier more. Could go Sterox or Garden Angel as well, but I think this is okay. I. No, no, that's not it. That is not it. No, that's not it. Okay, you know what, chat? Let's go for the Guardian Angel. Because, in fact, I cannot pilot my champion well enough. Alright, we gotta look for a pick. Because Nash is coming up and Baron is coming up. But my AD carry is dead. Alternatively, I can just look to sprint to bot lane here. And if enemies play for either of this, I just end the game. Again, I'm one of the best split champions in the game. So maybe that is actually my play here. If enemy team play for Nash, I end the game. I can one-shot Nash because I did 1k true damage on the two. Enemies are not contesting, so I shouldn't be jumping in, I guess. I have a stopwatch. Oh, I'm an award. They still have Zed old and K old and and, and and everything old. How's that a thing? GL boss. Thank you, boss. Oh, that's a level 16 kill. Get over there. Oh, okay. This game, gonna... this game is gonna be tricky. They're gonna have a full build kill. What?
I griefed. I griefed. I played too fast. I played too fast. I played too fast. What was that? Where is Kel? That is so not okay, by the way. Does my true damage do more because of PTA as well? Alright, I've seen Maokai end these. I've seen Maokai end these, chat. I've seen Maokai do this. Shit. I played too fast. I think my PTA increased my true damage and I actually one shot her because of that. Like, this is this is the kind of games that happen if you die like 10 times, you know? If I didn't die 10 times, this game would have already been over twice. This is what happens when you have a lack of discipline. This is why I always tell people to die less. Yes, Conqueror is better most of the time. PTA is just because I'm playing against Kale and I really want to play aggressive early. Can I not just end? Goodbye to your inner. I think Alois do another little bit of a grief angle chat. No, I made it in between. No, I'm dead to card sold. Mama Heeb! Goodbye. I don't have TP. Why is he so fast? What? Don't I still just go for their base? I mean... Nash, I guess? Uh oh. Am I dead? Nope. Why didn't I sell Guardian Angel? Because I was just short of Maul. I was like 40 gold off. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I got it. Can I get 600 AD with Baron and Red Potion? When we get Red Potion, I get 600 AD. Okay. The 600 AD Camille. Don't say anything. I think I'm legit just gonna focus on Nexus and shit. I ult to dodge the card is ult, then I flash away. I watch that guy. Pretty clean. I asked him to play the cream by myself there. I ulted the card is ult. It's pretty good. Oh! The ricochets killed the kill! It's GG. High key though, I played that team fight well. I high key played that team fight well. What's well, Camille hard matchup? Some really hard counters to Camille are Fiora, Jax. Mordecai is, is very tricky actually. Gwen, Cannon. What's the mistake you see a lot of lower elo Camille players do? Could you tell me a couple of the mistakes? They group up too much. Grouping up too much, uh, I think itemizing wrong. Itemization is a very big thing. For example, the other day I have one Camille one trick student, his name is Vector, and he was around Platinum 4, or in our Platinum MMR for three years in a row. We did two coaching sessions, he skyrocketed to Diamond 2. He legit went from Platinum to Diamond 2. And that is because he had no discipline. He won his lane 9 out of 10 times, but he had no idea how to expand his lead and play accordingly with his macro. He just was fighting, 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 limiters and limiters and limiters in every game. So that could be a mistake I see in a lot of Camille players, I guess. What about PTA? I saw Camille's doing it for Darius lane. I can see that one. Work. I personally don't play PTA Camille, I like Conqueror or Grasp, but maybe if you are a full Camille one trick, maybe you know that you can run PTA into certain matchups, but yeah, I'm not a full one trick, I don't have that knowledge, and I really like either Conqueror or Grasp, but I think that's perfect. Elawi, I don't think that's one of the nicest matchups, but it's okay. Now, again, I don't need Tenacity into enemy comp, because they are running zero... CC besides like RE and RE Everfrost, right? But this is a knockup, this is a knockup. Gana W is pretty much negligible. So here I think this setup again is correct. I think second wind is fine against the Lawe. I could run Bone Platinum. I think second wind is, is does the same thing. Alacrity, meaning we can run double double ID here. And I'm just gonna go ignite TP. Now the thing with, with, with the Alawe matchup is once you give her an opportunity where she gets the permanent prio and pushes you in and lands E onto you, it is really hard to play. So our goal is to try and avoid that by playing a very good lighting phase. Now, what I always say is, your first four... Oh, this Ari is masses, and this guy is diamond one. Okay, so what I always say is, your first four waves matter the most, right, in any matchup. If I give Alawi control in the first four waves in this matchup, she'll have control most of the lighting phase. So I really need to be on my A game at level one, and try and get priority and try and play aggressive in the early game. I need to space well, use my level up timers and try to abuse the fact that I have a stronger early game than the Alawi. All right, I'm gonna ask to get a ward down here. I wanna get vision, see if we can get a ward down so we know where Jarvan starts and then everybody in the map can play. Nice, we got the EXP, we need ward, anybody? Uh, if you get 3%, I believe, since the minions buff they did not too long ago, like 3-4 months ago, even if you have 3%, I am pretty sure I get le yes, I am sure I still get level 2 
from the first six minions here in top lane. So we have to play really according to this, okay? The first six minions right now will give me level two. If I can surprise that Lyra with an early level two, that can mean a very favorable trade for us. Since Zara wants to start blue buff, meaning she's going to pass into bot, meaning we're probably weak side, right? Oh. This could be a map split, where Jarvin takes this and goes here, and since Zao goes from this to this, so let's see how this plays out. So he has, okay, she has the flowable potion. If she faces me, I'm gonna go Q. Like I said, I wanna play aggressive early. I'm gonna utilize the fact that I have a stronger early game than her, and I'm going to try and utilize my level 2 against her, yeah, right? That's what I said. These castles will give me level 2 chat. I wanna stand backwards to bait her to walk forward. Okay, now I'm gonna get melee, I only need one caster now. Oh, I actually only need to melee. What? Wow, I only have five minions and I got level two. I actually don't know that. I learned something new too. She's playing really safe early as she should. So well played to the Illawi here. Two minions for level three chat. I'm gonna get her bone out. She didn't have it yet. Two minions for my level three. I kind of want to get my level three and then... Oh, I'm definitely abusing this. My minions might kill her minion. There we go. We get level three. And now we get a beautiful trade with level of timers again. All right, this is what I wanted. This is exactly what I had to do in the early game to try and make sure I'm in a good position in the first four waves. Now we have to crash this. I'm going to dive this guy. I'm going to E on the turret and wait till she flashes. Oh, please. Okay. <laughs> I almost misplayed. But she lost the entire wave. She lost her flash. Extremely good early landing phase here. This is what we wanted. This time around, I am going to go for a Sheen. The wave will bounce back into me. She's going to have to TP. I can walk back. This is what we want to chat. Good. We used our level up timers. There we go. All right, we see Jarvin here, 16 or 20 CS with a wrap off. So he did a full crit into both sides. She bought a room crystal. We still have TP. We're in a beautiful position now. She is not even level four yet. And look at this fat wave that I'm collecting. I gotta make sure I don't get hit by E here. I'm gonna ward here to see what she does because she might recall. We're in a good position. Oh, that's the issue with not having a longsword here. I forgot. I'm pinging the flash, so since Zao knows. The wave is slow bouncing back to Eli, but what I have to keep in mind is that Jarvan, after ganking bolt here, is always going to return back into topside here. So Jarvan is ganking bolt right now, but he's going to recon come back into topside. So I always gotta keep that jungle tracking in mind here. I'm gonna hit level 5 first here. Yo, Rupert Chef, thank you for the raid, boss. Hope you had an amazing stream. So the only reason I'm winning this 1v1 is literally because I'm a level higher, by the way, chat. Oh, she leveled up. Hmm. Maybe I could've played it better. Am I dead? Okay. I maybe could've played that better. I have my passive, but... Okay, it's okay. Let's recall. Hmm. She leveled up. I think I could've maybe killed her there, but I couldn't keep my 12 Conqueror stacks up, so... Tricky, tricky. I can do one thing here, though. Still make the wave push towards me. And that is by dragging these means a bit, like this and now my mains walk a bit across the halfway mark so it's still gonna push back into me here my main dies faster if i was maybe spacing better i would be able to manage to keep my 12 conquer stacks up and i would always kill her there but it's okay we're still in an okay position try to bait out her e but she's not falling for it she has she now too a plant in the river because it just spawns here so i'm gonna look for it instantly it can spawn here here or here here and this is the furthest unfortunate but we do get it i'm gonna queue here oh i think that's okay she has no ult now she wants this plate right oh no i can't get hit by that now i can't fight her okay it's okay she's gonna recall so I need to hard push the neck wave as fast as possible. She has no flesh yet. She has bone plating. I'm gonna slow push it to hard push and then I will lock her in lane with that. So we can still get ahead here with fundamentals. We don't need to kill her. If I just slow push this and hard push next and I hard push this next wave as fast as possible, I will still put a Lawi in lock in lane here. So my goal here is to push in this wave as fast as possible. And then recall. So the reason why I can still get ahead from this position is right now, this wave is going to bounce back into me. And Illawi should not have enough time to push in this wave and this wave before I am back and then I can ha have a freeze. Maybe I should have stayed and tried to trick her actually and look to all in her. She is going to try and push this. Maybe I should have stayed because I think I could kill her here. Maybe I made a mistake by actually recalling. Yeah, I definitely made a mistake by recalling. And it was in vision as well, so she feels safe hard pushing this. It's okay, I still lose nothing, but... That piggy. Get the Shoko Smurf. No. Alright, we just get the Herald done. I mean, I'm gonna take this boss. 
All right, well, that will spike us to Trinity Force for free, so that is really nice. I'm gonna Herald already. I just get three plates. It's too much to avoid, no? Maybe it was bad. Maybe it was bad to Herald, because I had Trinity Force anyways, and now, by not recalling... Even if, if Ari cancels me here, here once, I'd lose the full cannon wave plus, like, three plates. I should have recalled. It was a really bad Herald to do. I really need to work on my Heralds. This, this grieves my tempo, because if I had Herald, I could recall faster. I would also already be back in lane right now. But, because I spawned Herald, I didn't recall fast enough. I had to wait to hit the plate. And now I lose two plates myself, so the Herald was literally a waste of time, plus I lose a cannon wave. This was a terrible Herald. I'm a Mythic, she's not, but she still wins the Isolate at 1v1, just because of Champion. But that's okay, we don't have to 1v1 her. I want to try and get towards Hydra as quick as I can, and I can just look to roam mostly. Why is there a Jarvan, man? Yeah, we had some good movement. Jarvan's 1 HP. I don't think this is a good fight, bro. Okay, it was a gore. I don't know. Nope. To be fair, I didn't think we could fight there, but maybe we could have. I can TP here, maybe. Let's go! She should recall and I should stay bot. Right, before TPing, I was thinking, is the TP worth it? Because just the kill on Ezreal is not worth it for me. But if I can also play for the plates, then it's worth it for me, right? That's why I instantly ping this guy to go away and I get the plates myself here. Because I know Elau is getting everything on top lane now too, as well. Right, so now it's worth it for me because I get the kill and two plates. So Elau gets everything here on top, but I still get a lot myself. This game has been very nice for me because we got some nice Herald fights. Oh, that was a bad W. And um, I get this TP angle now, so... So of course also the benefit from running the TP on Camille. And that's one thing, my champion does better than Elawi, right? Elawi is better at the isolate 1v1, but I'm much better at killing people with my ult, so... That was beautiful. This would be an amazing dragon to get, actually. Oh, don't do this. Don't be here the Alright, you gotta die for that one. Janna's Faker. Janna is Faker! We're gonna rush Hydra. I don't necessarily need to do boots. I just want my Ravenous Hydra. It'll make me a lot stronger. This was pretty strong. Jarvis pretty strong. Oh, Lowey died. That's nice. I'll find the Janna. She has no flash, right? Oh my lord. Alright, I'm not driven. You can't do that, Alois. At least Alawi also died, so whilst I died, she died too. Now I'm gonna play for this tier 1, and there's a top lane tier 1 that's 1 HP as well. So there's a lot of things that I can play for this game, so I have a lot of ways to get, like, good money income. Alright, I need 1100 gold, then I have my second item. Play for that first. Alawi is most likely going into bot. My team is taking this, and then they're probably gonna go Herald next. Well, okay. I want to stay here. I hope Ari moves and I stay here. Because I can't really team fight right now. I'll be stronger at the other time. I can maybe get two turrets with this. If they stay long. Alright, I just got three kills that way. This is absolutely amazing. Alright, what's my third item in this game, chat? I believe it's a hole breaker. Now I'm gonna go top and play for this. I wanted to be here. See if we can kill him. Yeah, oh, I have two kill items. Dragon is coming up. Again, I'm probably not joining this dragon fight. Why? I can get 600 gold here. So I feel like I should still keep making myself stronger instead of looking for this fight, dragon fight. If I can get this 600 gold again, then the game's just guaranteed, honestly. I mean, now I don't even need Holebreaker anymore because I already got all the tier 2s. That went fast. Just really good tempo and macro here, right? My TP to top was amazing. I can probably look to just kill this Alawi again instead of looking to join for the, for the dragon. I think I'm just looking to kill this Alawi again.
we go. Like I said, I'm not joining. So this is one of the biggest mistakes that lower MMR players make. They always join team fights to group up with your team. You see here how I never grouped up with my teammates when I was in bot lane instead of playing for the bot tier 1 and the bot tier 2. Then I said I'm gonna be playing away from this dragon, I'm gonna get the tier 2 top and probably kill the Alawi again. So now I'm gonna be 3 items strong, level 14, and look how strong I am now. Just by playing correct side lanes. Tempo and mid to late game macro chat. Hope you guys took away something from those last 3 to 4 minutes because I expanded my lead with like 4k gold. My teammates dying here, hey that's not my fault they had the dragon they should have just ran away you know okay now we have 10 cents per minute as well because i've been playing side lane right i'm playing for drone camps and side wave so now i'm a 10 cents per minute camille that has taken all the tier two turrets so now i'm on equal strength as the eight kill fight yeah, if we don't fight, then, then we're just all dead. She has to fight with me still. Yeah, then we just die one by one. I think if she fights with me on the Jarvan, maybe I should run. But I think we should fight her with me on the Jarvan and try to get as much damage as we can. King Sin Zhao! He's the king. Jarvan king? No, he's a bitch. It's King Sin Zhao. Let's go home! Well, let's see I can make a pick. We have Vex ult too. Oh, I'm... Little choke level. Little choke level. Oh, my E was perfect there. I can't hit the thing. All right, chat. We did a little bit of choke ulting on enemy team. I mean, that's the special of Camille, right? That's your Camille special right there. You just one shot people, and you just need to buffer your like. You can buffer their CC with your E or with your ult, and that would just randomly carry the game, I guess. Is Shift viable on Camille? It depends on your goals. If your goals are to lose the game, it is a really good item, I guess. You distracted me. Kidding. It's my own mistake if I die. Yeah? I mean, the more items this champion gets, the stronger she becomes. So I feel like we're absolute monsters now. And now we want to probably try to push out bot lane. If we can get a 1v1 scenario, we always win. So any 1v1 scenario is good. 1v2 is also good. I just don't want to 5v5. Like, we can 5v5. Actually, we can do everything. Bec the reason why I can 5v5 is because if I engage, Vex and Nautis can follow. Let's wait for our E. We hit E, W, ult. And she gets escaped. One K through the Mitch. Stop that shit! Stop that! Everything black. Are we a piggy? Woo! Who else? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ori, yeah, Ori. Can you try run? Try, yeah, try run against my champion, bro. Hey, Chad, that's how we play Camille, huh? You play for side lanes. That's the benefit of Camille. If you have good macro, your Camille will be good. If you have shit macro, good luck playing Camille. Let's showcase how much gold I got from not playing teamfights twice in a row. This is one of the most important things that you have to learn as a top laner in general, especially if you play split push. And this is the biggest mistake that I see between lower MMR and higher MMR. One of the biggest. Simply, they group too much. All right, let's press X. I am currently 1k gold behind the SRO, all right? I am 1k gold ahead of the Alawi. So keep this in mind. 15 minutes in the game, we are 1k gold behind Astro and 1k up on the Alawi. Let's see how we expand our lead. We go bot. And what is the next neutral objective that is going to come up? It is the Herald. But I'm consciously playing away from this Herald, which is called cross mapping because enemy team will use all of their tempo to group up for this objective. And whilst they're grouping there, I can play to split push. So we go bot lane right here. And I see Alawi here in a second going up top lane too. So I see three people here and then we spot Alawi top. So I'm like, yes, we can play for the turret. But then the Ari shows. So now I kind of hate my position. So I try to dive her, but I can't really, right? There's not much for me to do. So now Ari has to make a decision. She's either going to group up with her team right here for the Herald or she stops me 
and clears his bolt wave, so I have no tempo. What Kamilsh or what the Ari should do here is push in this wave. Then I have no play anymore, but look. Ari moves away, which is a very common mistake that you see in lower MMR. This is Diamond 1 2 Master MMR. This Ari is Masters, by the way. But what she forgets here is now with grouping, look how many resources I can get for free here. There's four people spending their tempo here, and with Ari moving, that means five. So remember, we're 1k gold behind, even more than 1k gold behind on Astro, and 1k gold up on the Lowry. All right, so now we can get this tier one. Boom, we get a tier one turret here. We get the wave. Nobody can stop us because they're all on Herald, right? Also, another very big mistake that Alawi does here is, is anybody in my team ever going to contest this Herald? No. So what Alawi should do is push in this wave and get this tier one turret. So this guy is also inting his tempo. It's all about tempo in the mid game, as you will find out the higher elo you become. It's all about tempo. So Alawi is standing here on this thing when nobody in my team is even going to contest it, right? Alawi should be pushing this and getting the top tier one turret. Okay, so now I have still enough tempo because nobody's here, nobody's nearby. And that gives me the tempo to even get this tier two turret as well. So we get tier one turret, tier two turret, and the waves. Now we're literally even in gold with the Esuro, although we were 1.3k gold behind. Now we are even. Now Alawi overstayed tempo. And I spot this because, look, he's still sitting on 1k gold. I have all my gold spent here. So right now, this guy's sitting on 5k gold. I've spent 9k gold in items, right? So I'm 4k gold stronger here. That's why I win this 2v1 so easy. All right, next thing. What is the next neutral objective? Well, chat, it is going to be Dragon. Dragon is spawning in one minute. But what if I told you I'm going to do the exact same thing, which is play away from the neutral objective and play for side lane again? Because I can't really guarantee that this 5v5 scenario is going to go well, but I do know that my side lane play is going to go well here. So now I use this. I don't want to waste more tempo on this golem camp, so I even get this tier to it as well. So now I went from 1k gold ahead on Elawi, right? At 15, I was 1k gold ahead on Elawi. I am almost... No, I am 3.5k gold ahead in 3 minutes. Ezreal is 1k gold ahead in me, I'm almost 1k gold ahead on him right now. That's how you utilize tempo and macro in the mid to late, especially on a split push champion. And now the Alawi went top because she feels like it's safe. It's not. I kill it again. So now I am 4k gold up and I'm level 14 to level 11. And from this point onwards, I can 1v9 the game. If you want to learn how to utilize all the tempo and macro, tips that you can do because this is only one subject this is called cross mapping you can check out my course right here right i have a full intensive course that goes over all the ways to get tempo and have a good macro oh it's a mordekaiser game and we have another mordekaiser game could be fun very interesting matchup to play for sure right um b -b 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 let me think here in terms of setup i think ignite teleport is fair i think second win is correct like, I could go for Biscuits this or like Biscuits this something, right? But I think second wind, maybe Demolish, maybe Shield Bash, I'm trying to think here. I don't, I think Unflinching is not bad either. I think maybe Unflinching is correct here. Against the Locks and the Zaya, I think it's alright. Alright, so we are red side against Mordekaiser with Flash TP, Conqueror Resolve, very standard. And they have a Kane jungle, we have a Briar jungle. I'll be honest, this is my first game with a Briar. I've never seen her in game yet. And I have not, I, I have actually been playing quite a bit. So this is actually the first time I spot her. Now I take D Blade in this matchup. And the reason being is that more the character is actually quite a weak champion in the early game. So because I can play aggressive in the early matchup here, I can look to go for my level two timer, level three timer, and look for aggressive traits. I want to complement that by taking a Doran's Blade. If I play the matchup where I probably get shoved in early, I'd be looking for a D-Shoot. I'm gonna switch this to Person Offset. It's just because I'm more used to that on red side. It feels chiller for me. And Kane is showing here, so that gives me the opportunity to look for a ward right here. And as I always say, I do this ward in the early game so I can scout where Amy John is going to be starting his position. Oh, what the hell? How did they get behind me like that? I have no idea how to get... Bro, we literally saw them walking, bro. I don't think that's a Briar issue. I'm just gonna get Bone Plating out for free. There we go, no bomb blading on that guy. I think W start is still correct in this matchup, so it's okay. Like, I could Q trade there, but I don't think I want extended fights because of his passive, right? He can auto Q auto, he gets his passive, and it's not good for me, so. I think W there is better. I will sustain the mana, he has no bomb blading right now, so I can look for a more aggressive trade. Now, I want to look to secure my level 2 first simply because it will allow me to play this matchup much more accordingly. Alright, looks like Briar is passing into bot, whereas, I mean, King could be starting here, right? Dodge the Q, get the auto in. Another auto. I like this trade for me. Again, I should be able to secure my level 2 first here. It's vital important that, of course, sides up the Q there. Yeah, like I said, Kane could be doing Raptors and then invading the Briar on the rep buff. 
like I anticipated. So now we're in a bit of a problem because Kane is behind me and he's going to be level 3 already from this camp. Plus the way he's pushing to the Mordekaiser. Kaiser. So this Briar has no brain, unfortunately. But so now we need to kind of just stay on the backside to not get us up in a gang position. I'm picking E second for sure. I have no flash, right? So I gotta stay safe here. So uh, we can play more aggressive, unfortunately. I'm gonna get W here. Also get his bone plating. Get the last hit still though. Alright, at this point, Kane should not be topset anymore, in theory. So I feel like I can just E into him right here, as Kane should not be here anymore. Very good trade. And as long as I keep sustaining with my Ws, we're always gonna be fine. Alright, I'm gonna have my level 3. Kane could be in his top side. After his top side, he probably wants to go into bot side or look for a top lane gank. But from his perspective, it doesn't make too much sense to look for a top side gank. So I think we're completely fine here and landing in isolation now. This might set him up to get Dove, because he has no W right now as well. But his bone plating is coming up relatively soon. So I'm keeping that in mind too. He has bone plating. I kind of want Sheen or Double Longs to my recall. So I'm going to stay be a little bit more aggressive here. Okay. That was an opportunity to maybe get out his bone plating. Now he still has it. He gets level 4 from that minion. I think I keep laning just because I want to get my Sheen on my first recall. Good. I do want this wave to push into me. I'm not too scared of him hitting me there. It's still tricky for me to win the all-in fight here because I'm very low mana. So I only have enough mana for... I actually have enough mana for all my abilities and he just uses W. So, I feel like I can all-in him here now actually. Oh, we saw you cut back. Okay, I think maybe I should have done my W more consistent or more in my combo there. So it actually dies. I think I failed up my combo there. Let's actually look into the revo to that. But we did get his flash and the wave is still pushing towards me. So in terms of that, it's good for me what happened here. All right, the wave is pushing into me. He lost the full cannon wave and we got his flash. But I feel like we may have had a kill window there that I missed out on. So we definitely should review that. When TP, I'm not using any more gold. I'm going to go for the sheen here. And he has no potions, alright, so he only has his blasting one, it's okay. I'm a little bit ahead in XP, right, he just hit level 5, and look at all the means that I'm going to receive, so... We still got a little bit of a lead there. Nice, my prior is 0-4, first time I've seen that champion, looks, uh... Awesome. Ooh, should not get hit by that. That's pretty bad by me. The only issue when you go Shin Kamil like this is last setting here is kind of tricky. You see, I don't actually one-shot them. There's going to be plants falling at around minute 6, so I can look to get priority here. And by trading with him, and by getting the priority and trading, I can get to the plant first. So I like this trade simply because I should have access to the plant first here. So I'm doing that trade consciously because... I'm gonna slow push this wave, hard push next, and now have access to the plant before he does. I also know that I had the XP lead, so he would not get level 6 there. Alright, so now I'm gonna push in this wave as fast as possible, and instead of recalling, I'm actually gonna look to go for the uh, plant that's gonna spawn in the river at this timer. Oh, he's 0 5 now, so the Mordekai should not know about this. I'm gonna ping that this guy's no flash, but yeah, I don't really want my Jonah to gank, I suppose. So now, we do have the HP lead, we have a, a small CS lead, this plate is relatively low HP, but all in him is still tricky. Alright, that's bone plating. Very nice. I want to do the short trades whenever he uses his cooldowns like that, right? We're getting Ignite back. Maybe we can look for an all in window. Especially if he uses his W again randomly, I'll definitely look to all in instantly. If he uses W once to sustain, I'm looking to all in. He's also not level 7 yet. Alright, use W. There we go. Wave is still pushing into us. So slow methodical approach there. Uh, the biggest part about this laning phase was that I utilized the plant to my advantage. I think I can slow push this wave, hard push next wave and get it to crash. I think that's the best play for me here. I could also let this push into me though. Maybe that is better because Kane is topside. I'm gonna lose a little bit of XP for it, but it's probably more consistent. I'm gonna go for Trinity Force. And the main reason as to that is because they have four squishy champions and then the Mordekaiser, the right? So I think Trinity Force is good here. I think the biggest thing of this laning phase is the fact that I utilized the fact that he had zero potions, right? He had no flash. I got the slow push into hard push into his third, then made the wave bounce back, but I got the plan for sustain, he did not, and then we got our ignite back and we could kill him. So yeah, it was just a very methodical approach there with our fundamentals, and then we get the kill. So now he just hit level 7, right? And I'm already level 8. We get a free still, so we're in a good position, we are not really able to get ganked here. And uh, we just gotta really try and figure out how to win this game, because our John is on 5, so... My biggest goal right now in this part of the landing phase is to try and stay, like, even. Because if I farm even for 500 or for 800 gold, rather, I will have my Trinity Force, and he doesn't really have a spike yet from that, right? So we're in a very good position here in that regard. I don't really expect any jungle games because, yeah, my jungler is just very weak. He's on 5. So, uh, yeah, we just gotta be a bit 
extra careful on the cane always. So whenever the wave is here, this is what I refer to as the happy spot. They can't really gank me, so we're in a good position. He uses this E for that. So I'll punish that way. But you see, I don't really do that much damage. If anybody flames my wall up, I'm perma banning you. I want to get to 1133 gold, right? There's an Ari roam. Alright. I definitely want the last hit. Now we need to get 1130 gold. That was an amazing roam by the Ari for me. Because now I can also get plates. And I think I will actually stay. But Kane might come. Okay, let's see. Then I get two plates here now. So that's nice, we did get a roam. We didn't necessarily need it. But it makes our gameplay a lot easier, at least. We still only get a Trinity Forge, but it's okay. I think I should recall here, because it gives me a bounce timer again. Uh-oh. It actually gives vision at ultimate, so that's good to learn. Okay, I could sell boots and get... Or sell refill and get boots. I think I will. Uh, and now my next item is going to be uh, by Ravenous Hydra. Right, so this guy doesn't have his item spike. I do. I have Ignite, but he has Flesh and Ult. Oh, well played. That's very, very nice, that shutdown. It's a very big shutdown that stabilizes the game a lot. That's good. We're back in time because we recalled. We didn't stay for anything extra. And now my goal is to try and get towards Titan... Or, yeah, my, my Tiamat as quick as possible. You see how the Mordecai had just hit level 8? I'm already level 9, so we're in a blast position. I don't have to freeze, and that is because I can get more by not freezing. So at this point in the game, I'm not going to freeze because I can get a lot more. I can get a lot more from just pushing waves and looking to get plays, right? So I don't want to freeze at this point in the, in the game. He literally killed himself doing that. He can't run now. <laughs> Smartest Mordecai is the main chat. We will carry this game. Kane is here. He's gonna herald mid. So I have enough tempo to look to do whatever I want here. I don't have to be scared of him. Alright, let's go for two more plates. Mordecai said will be TPing back. Actually, Kane is not staying here. I got a big shutdown. So I gotta just get this plate. Then I'll have Tiamat and let's recall. I'm not gonna overstay. Mordecai will TP. I have Tiamat. I'm gonna save my E just in case the Kane arrives. Okay. TP, TP. I could TP down here. But... It is kind of risky, because Briar is here, and I think TPing top is better, because it will allow me to play for the turret. So I think that's just a better play for me. I'm not gonna pink ward, I don't need it. Kane is bolt, and I'm gonna utilize that tempo to try and play for this tier 1 turret whilst the Kane is bolt right now. So I don't have to be scared of the Kane. Alright, we killed Yon, that's very massive. Kane is still bolt side, I don't have to be scared of Kane. That gives me tempo to try and push this. Kane is moving here. I'm moving. Hmm. That champion looks kinda useless, I'll be honest, chat. Alright, we can get a scuttle here. It's okay, let's keep kiting at the top. Hmm. No. Okay, more guys just use E and Q. Alright. I'm not sure if I had to ult there, but he had flash, right? And this way he can I dodged this Q. So even if he ulted me, like I feel like I'm always safe there. He can't flash away. I think that's my best play. I think ulting is good. Now let's get the third. We can get it, we'll take some damage, but it's okay. Against my auto. Alright, we got the turret. Uh, right now, I want to be bot lane, actually. Because I can stay for play for the tier 1 turret there. So, let's think of my item here. Tabis is pretty good, right, against these. Uh, but I'm gonna rush this first. I think it's better for me. Once I hit the tier 2, or like the full Hydra, it's gonna be amazing for me. I want to go bot here, because I win the 1v1 very easily against the Yon. And I can actually play for this tier 1 turret. In top lane, there's nothing really for me to do. They're probably gonna play for Herald. So, I just want to go into bolts. I can also have the Ari here. Unlucky. Oh, I think I clicked wrong there. I think that should have been a kill. He did flash though. Unlucky. We get our tempo towards bolt, which is what I need. So, the young flash there is going to be like 19, 20 top. We did kill the cane. Alright, so right now I'm going to push this turret. Push next wave. And get my Hydra, and then open up on the map again. And let's see where we go and open up. I'm not sure yet. Definitely want the Cloth Armor now. I think I go bot here for the same reason that I said earlier. If I kill this Yon that has no flesh right now, I can even play for this tier 2 turret, which is 600 gold. And enemy team should be playing for Herald here. So whilst enemy team is playing for Herald, I'm going to try and make myself stronger through side. And I think Yon goes for this wave, and if he does, I just kill him here. And I get access to the tier 2 turret as well.
No way, right? Holy shit, I got to play it. This would have been such a big kill to get. My plan was correct. My execution was really off. Kaiser, just walk to him. They just walk. Silly goose is what we call him. Alright, well, it really sucks, because now this really destroys my tempo and my plan in the game, but it's okay. My plan was correct, my execution was not. Please don't take my waves. Alright, it's third dragon. Kane is here, two items. Jones gonna have around two items, because he got my shutdown and a full turret. We need this dragon, because it's their third dragon. We need to wait for Ari, though. That's our engage, kind of. I can't be first engage, unless it's on the Kane, I guess. Hmm, I think I misplayed. I also had zero people helping me out, to be fair. I should never be first engaged, it's just never going to work. There's a side wave coming into me here. Yeah, okay, flash. They have three dragons now. It's pretty bad. I really lost my tempo when I died. We should hard push here. I still have a strong Kaisa. Oh my. Did I kill my Kaisa? I think I should complete my move here. I don't think they could be one even. By the looks of it. I don't know what my champions are doing, but it's not looking so late. Uh, I don't have to pee. Tricky, tricky, huh? <sighs> when I died both to Yon, that's where I lost control of the game. I have to 1v1 this guy. Alright, so I checked this item before I went, he hadn't recalled since he got into tier 2, so I knew I could win the 1v1 because he didn't recall. You see how Kane got the full item? I honestly thought he was sitting on a bit more gold, but I guess he only had 3k gold. But that 1v1 at least gives me... No, I might be dead. This guy almost has 3 items, so I cannot 1v1 him. Where, where are my teammates? I'm rotating and we're standing underneath our turrets. Now we want to fight, but Swain has already died. Okay, they get Nash for that though. I guess we stop the dragon. We get we, we just we just get the dragon. We at least stop their soul. It's okay. It's okay actually because we get the dragon. So we get five more minutes to scale. Okay. Gonna recon TP on this guy. Nice. Oh, I just sold the wrong item by the way. I'm not sure if I win. No, I messed up my Q. I don't win. Okay, I misplayed that extremely hard with my Q, but it's okay. I also mismanaged my items, so I think I sold an item. I purchased an item and then I sold it and I bought something wrong, but that's okay. We stopped their Nash, they don't have soul, so we have an opportunity to look to scale now. I honestly also think that the Death Stance is 10 times better for me than whatever I'm building right now with the Spear of Sojourn. Death Stance is way better. Oh, this guy might not have ult actually. How did Ari die? And how did Kaisa die? Why is everybody just dead? They all just died for fun. Very tricky game, huh? Fuck! I could have carried this game, chat. If I had a little bit better mechanics on my champion.
achieve its destiny. Alright, we can scale now by farming all the minions, so that's something. We can still win. These guys are still push. Am I gonna receive any assistance or No, no, we just we just run away when he's focusing me and he uses every ability on me. We just walk away. I was stop griefing man. Oh what the hell? I don't think she's even looking at the screen by the way. I can't even move. Alright, well played, I guess, to Young. That guy is just full over 9 Alright, unfortunate. I think it could be a really good game to win. Lightning Face is very educational, though. Man, that's a frustrating one. That, that game stinks so much. That game stinks so much. So many things ha went wrong this game. This 1v1, right here. Remember when I said, so look at my point in the game right here. If I press tab, press X. I'm actually 8k gold, I'm super far ahead, I'm double the gold of the Mordekaiser, and here I'm saying, enemy team is probably gonna play for Herald, as I said, so what I should do is look to catch Yone here on the side lane, and then we get the tier 2 turret as well, and the game would be over. I'm 2k gold up, I'm a full item up on this Yone, and I somehow end this 1v1. Okay, so the E misses, which makes sense. It jungles the aggro, I Q. Yeah, I just missed out my ult, I guess. I don't know how should I how, how should I approach this? I think chasing here is fine. Maybe I should play slower, or maybe I should ult earlier. Maybe I, should, I don't know. I should know how should I play this? Like ulting here, if he ease back, my ult actually disappears. I've had that happen when I ult a Yon, he can actually make Camille ult disappear. So I want to wait with my ult. So I'm spacing to his thing. Here, Q, of course. And I'm an old Q, but when I do, he instantly knocks me up into double knock up into fists me. Alright guys, that is it for this video and for the Camille guide. If you guys like this type of content, please let me know down below. And make sure to leave a like and a subscribe if you want to see more of this content. Now, comment down below what champion you would love to see next, as the top comment in this video will be the champion that I will be doing next week. Have an amazing day guys, and see you guys in the next one.